Odin, that's not a carrot. Huh? It's a radish. Radishes? Radishes? Do you, can you pick some more? Are you only picking one? Oh, uh, well, you're going the wrong way. Are you going to go put it on the bench? I got my little helper here in the garden. <laughs> I'm harvesting some stuff for a weekend retreat. I'm going to a woman's retreat for the weekend, and I am the chef. So I'm bringing some goodies from the garden to cook with. Going to grab some of these radish. I'm going to get some of these green tops from the Egyptian wok and onions. Some garlic chives, maybe some nasturtium blooms that we can add to our salads. Thank Gonna you harvest a little bit of Swiss chard and then out the beet greens to have some greens to add to the soup. Thank what do you got? Radishes. Yeah, put it in your wagon. Okay. Odin loves helping in the garden. The seasons are definitely changing. Our new fall and winter plants are growing and thriving, and our summer plants are declining and going to seed. We're harvesting seeds and new growth on some of these vegetables out here that we planted for fall, already getting some fall harvest. I really didn't want the garlic to come up this much already, but we've been pretty warm, so you can see how well the Swiss chard and the garlic is doing in this bed. We have tons of beet germination this go round. There's a little bit of an empty spot right there where the cat's tilled. The broccolini and kale are starting to take off as well. And some garlic growing is in addition. But unfortunately, none of those carrot seeds took. I might try one more time and covering it with a frost blanket and seeing if I can get it to work. But what we do have is lots of Roselle hibiscus, sorrel, many different names. Caribbean sorrel is one of the popular names. The greens are edible. They're a nice sour flavor. Um, usually just use the fresh tender ones. You can use the bigger ones. They just have to be cooked more in a soup or something. Whereas this you could eat fresh. They're very delicious and very high in vitamin C. We're mainly growing them for the calyxes of the flour that we're going to make into a tea. All right. It is now on the other end of the weekend and I survived. <laughs> I was very honored to cook a lot of wonderful food for some very amazing women and to get to share it, our experiences together around food was just what my heart needed and I feel very refreshed and nourished from it. And coming home to my beautiful garden makes me so happy. I miss, I miss it when I'm gone. But we are now seeing a forecast for 27 degrees tomorrow night. So a lot of what's out here has to be harvested if we're going to save it. So I've got some work to do. We've got some of the Trumancino squash that needs to be pulled. So we've got, if we want any nasturtiums to eat this week, we'll need to pull those. The Swiss chard should be okay. The beets will be okay. Basil will definitely die in this temperature. So any basil that we still need to harvest, we need to do so all of these peppers now i meant to harvest these peppers already and i just have not had time so you can see there's tons of peppers that'll need to be harvested and i won't pull the plants just in case a lot of times just the tips of new growth will die on the first freeze and it might get warm again so we live in georgia it's very unpredictable weather but these roselle are just at the point where they're actually a decent size on these calyxes. Some people let them bloom first and then harvest, but we are going to have to harvest them at this stage because we're gonna get too cold for them. 
The good thing is, is I feel like the plants that we got in the ground already for the fall and winter are established enough that this cold is not too early. It is a tad bit early. Um, usually it's not on the 31st that we get a freeze, but it can happen in Georgia. Usually it's a week from now, but these are all guesstimates and every year it's different. So our broccolini and kale and all of those brassicas that we got in the ground a few weeks ago are strong and established roots now. So they'll be okay to handle some of this cold weather. Just want to take a second to appreciate this. This is a volunteer tomato plant from our cherry tomatoes that were in this bed. We actually have another volunteer right here. But look at this. These things are blooming. <laughs> they would have put out another round of cherry tomatoes if they could. They're such strong, healthy little plants. I'm kind of tempted to put my greenhouse thingy over here, but then... I don't know how well it would protect it because this is raised beds. It would have to sit on top of it. So air would still go underneath where the path is. But I don't have anything planted over there yet. So might be worth it. And then the frost came. We had our first cold snap of the season. Went down to 27 degrees. And everything is sad all of the plants we gotta dig these potato uh, not potatoes peanuts yesterday it went down to below freezing last night too the night before last as well and these were fine yesterday but it went even colder and now they have succumbed to the cold the okra leaves <laughs> this okra was still fine yesterday but we went ahead and covered the important stuff that we knew would still continue growing um, looks like the frost fabric got pulled off of those we'll have to go in there and harvest all the calyxes real quick but our peppers stayed protected from the cold oh I thought I got all of the green tomatoes off yesterday but it looks like I missed one this one feels a little soft so might have to just go to the chickens. You see the dark, dark green? That's because of the frozen cells. And uh, I harvested all the green tomatoes yesterday. So we'll be making something with that. But as you can see, the brassicas are standing strong and tall. No harm came to them with these low temperatures. They are meant for this type of weather. My poor banana plants. They looked so beautiful yesterday. What's interesting is this newest leaf doesn't look like it got cold damaged. You would expect that to be the first one to damage. We'll allow these leaves to lay down around the base of the plant to add a layer of protection to the root zone. Because you can lose these subtropical banana trees in the winter in Georgia if the root base gets too exposed so leaving the leaves on the plant over winter helps protect it